All right. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Welcome into another electrifying episode of Geek Garage Goes to the Movies. This is number 220. I am your host, David, like usual, and I am joined also, as per usual, by my co-host, Ted. How are you doing? Good, sir. Uh, better that we didn't do that other awful intro. <laughs> yeah, the whole trusty... Nope, we're not. We're not. We nope, we've moved past it. All right. Well, move, moving right along then. We are continuing along with our theme month of sorts of first watches where we have both picked out two movies and we sort of kind of forced the other person to watch the said movie uh, because they had not seen it before and we take the episode to discuss it and today's episode marks the first movie that i have not seen that ted has and his pick for me was ip man uh, just a few things to cover before we jump right into the episode. Uh, if you have been listening to the past couple of episodes of the podcast, this is not necessarily new news, but we'll cover anyways. Uh, some updates on events. Uh, Evil Con uh, that was moved to July 10th through 12th. Uh, that's Evil Con in uh, Evansville, Indiana. Uh, a Kai Con is still set for July 24th or the 26th. A Kai Con is held in Lebanon, Tennessee. And we, of course, were there last year. We didn't do so hot, but we learned from our mistakes and we're coming back bigger and better than ever. So we're super excited for that. MTAC, uh, that was postponed, not yet rescheduled. MomoCon and Nashville Comic Con, those were both postponed and moved to 2021 we are hoping that those things still happen next year uh, because we were super excited for the for both of those events uh, nashville comic-con that was supposed to be or this year was supposed to be the first year inaugural year for Com nashville comic-con so hopefully that will still happen and we'll still get to see all kinds of cool people and cosplay and, and get to meet, you know, new people and new fans and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, um, that's our update on events. Uh, I, I think that's pretty much it as far as our, uh, coverage for pre-roll. Ted, do you have anything that we need to toss out there before we, we kick things off? Uh, no, not that I can think of. Cool. Well, let us roll that music and get this party started, shall we? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. So, David, um, first things first, what is your new favorite movie and why is it Ip Man? <laughs> I mean, it's not Ip Man, but holy shit, this movie is pretty fucking good. I haven't seen too many kung fu movies, but I got to tell you, this this was pretty dope. Uh yeah, you, you picked a good one to start with. And we'll circle back to, to you know, martial arts from movies or kung fu movies or, or what, whatever you want to call them mm -hmm. um, momentarily. To give a little background to listeners who may be unfamiliar with the film Ip Man, um, it is a 2008 martial arts film based uh, very loosely on the life of Ip Man or Yip Man, uh, who was the trainer of Wing Chun and bruce lee's uh, famously uh, bruce lee's mentor one of bruce lee's mentors um i say loosely based because about three things in this movie actually happened but that doesn't make it any less awesome to see uh, mm -hmm. you know I, i've said this before about other movies and i'll say it about this one too we're not really watching it for the story we're watching <laughs> it donnie and kick the shit out of people and it, yes and, and it, excuse me and the movie delivers in spades uh, mm -hmm. in, in in that regard so 
That's great. This is definitely not the only iteration of It Man. It's not the only movie about It Man or his life. Some are better than others. Some are more based in reality than others. This is probably um, in in the running for the best iteration. This this um, this series, I should say, starring Donnie Yen. There are now four of these movies uh, over the last ten to twelve years. The most recent one just came out last year, uh, late twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. have not got a chance to see it yet but it's high up on the list the first three are all on netflix um the first two are really good and the third one sure is a thing that exists um <laughs> you know they can't all be great so sure. I, I like it anyway it's bad straight up but i like it anyway i don't care of course like i said there are some other iterations probably one of the more well-known ones is um the Grand Master by Wong Kar Wai, which is, it's got some of the fighting elements, but it's more of a, it's definitely more in Wong Kar Wai's wheelhouse. So it's it's much more meditative, much more thought of, uh, thoughtful, more emotional than it is based on just like, you know, fighting. Still a good movie, also on Netflix. Recommend checking it out as well. Now, back to the task at hand. Uh, so, David, like you said, this is kind of your first foray into martial arts films or kung fu films yeah. and it is a good one to start with in my opinion you know talk about being an, a newbie i guess and um you know what your expectations were going in versus the reality of of watching the film sure so i was excited to kind of get my feet wet with you know quote unquote kung fu movies with this one in particular but I also, I mean, I felt like I should have been ashamed in two different ways. One, that it took me this long to kind of get my feet wet with Kung Fu movies. And two, getting my feet wet with this one in particular. And of course, like we have said, and we will say, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this movie. In fact, quite the opposite. But I feel like I should have watched maybe one a little bit more quote unquote classic, like one starring Bruce Lee or, you know, something from like the seventies or eighties where I don't know. I don't know if that's considered like the golden age of, of Kung Fu movies, but I know when people talk about Kung Fu movies that the, the Kung Fu movies from that era get, get discussed a lot. Yeah. I think when most people think of Kung Fu movies or martial arts films, they tend to think of that. Well, first, first, like you said, Bruce Lee, who is the icon. Sure. Then they probably think of the, the Shaw brothers films, stuff like 36 chambers of Shaolin, uh, five deadly venoms. A lot of those like seventies really, really like B movie Mm -hmm. type films. Right. That are, that are all good. Like they're all enjoyable, particularly if you're a fan of the genre, but like, they just got cranked out. They had a lot of the same people in them, just in like different wigs. It's very obvious that like the, the makeup's bad, the costumes are corny. Like there's a lot to try to look past. But at the same time, you know, these movies were made for next to nothing, essentially. Some right. of them had bigger budgets. Some of them were considered like big business, like you would consider like a blockbuster film, maybe now. Okay. But a lot of them were just like similar to like B horror movies where it's just like, Hey, we've got 10 grand and one guy who might've been in a high school play (laughs) and like, you know, uh, my buddy's cute sister or whatever. And like, let's make a movie. Some of them definitely were more in that vein. Right. It's, it's kind of like clerks, but Kung Fu sort of. Um, so it, it kind of varies. And then of course you have like, even within like martial arts films, you have different styles. So you have the much more like slapstick kind of stuff that um, Jackie Chan has done a lot of where it's mm-hmm. like the, the kind of seamless blending of the action and the comedy that, that works really, really well. You also have the more serious stuff um, like uh, that, like Yimu has done. So like hero or shadow or a couple, you know, a few different movies like that, that are a little more on the dramatic serious end of it. And then you have some, you know, that fall kind of anywhere on the spectrum between those. The thing I like about It Man to kind of bring it back is it has some of the comedy bits, but it doesn't quite go into slapstick. Like there's not the Jackie Chan moment where he like gets a hit and then he 
he doesn't look at the camera in like a fourth wall sense, but it's very clearly like a, a, a wink and a nod sort of thing where he's like, oh, you know. Sure. Um, but there are definitely some funny moments, particularly in the first, not the first fight scene of the film, but the first fight scene between Ip Man and um, Jin, where, You're right. you know, he knocks over the vase and Jin knocks over the vase after um, Ip Man's wife, uh, Chun Wing Sing, has been like, don't break my stuff. And he's just like, <laughs> I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay. And, you know, yeah, it's right. just, it's to keep the action moving, but it's also kind of funny, you know, yeah. where he's just like, oh, fuck it, I'll pay for it, let's fight, you know. Right. Yeah, I, so, I thought the, the, kind of the opening fight scene, the one that you, you mentioned very, very briefly, was, was an interesting place to start, and it kind of caught me off guard, because, I wasn't sure what was going on at first. Like, right. I, I, I didn't, I mean, I, I figured out pretty quickly that he was, you know, one of like the, I guess, lower masters that, that reside within that, that town that is known for, you know, Kung Fu training. Mm. And, and like he, he goes, he's like, I'll wait, you know, and I'll, I'll let you finish dinner. <laughs> Before, you know, I, I try and, you know, attempt to, you know, lay a finger on you during, you know, a sparring session. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he, he ends up inviting him to dinner and they, they have dinner and then they, you know, fight afterwards. And that was, you know, of course, pretty funny. So I thought that was a pretty interesting way to kind of like dive into the, the action of the movie was, was just that one part. And then of course, you know, the kid trying to retrieve his kite, uh, coming across their their sparring and then you know running running to his friends and attempting to spread this rumor and uh that that other guy i, I don't know i think he was maybe a a, a server or uh a, a waiter in a restaurant and he brought them tea and he gave him shit for trying to spread rumors i just i, I thought that the the whole like I understood where they were going with it pretty quickly when all of a sudden, like it turned into doom and gloom. It, it, Cause I was like, I was like, oh, it, it seems kind of uh, not what I was expecting. It seems very, very happy, upbeat, very jokey. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah. And then everything went to shit. And I was like, Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> if, if you look, I know um, I, I, at least I think Netflix uses different thumbnails um for for the same movie but i i know uh -huh. when i was re-watching this the thumbnail is i th i think it's also the dvd case so if you're familiar with that it's just it's donnie yen as it man with like a bow staff it's very like dark color mm -hmm. dark color palette and it looks like you know a war-torn city which um it kind of ends up becoming but to see that and then to watch the first 20 minutes or so of the movie you're like I, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. You're like, what the fuck's happening? This is not all, you know, yeah. what I expected. Yeah. I do think though, that that introduction to the characters and to it man's life, like you get a lot out of that. Oh um, yeah. In for a very sure. Short time. Like you see yeah. that he's very serious about martial arts and you see that he's, you know, not to be fucked with basically. <laughs> um, yeah. You yeah. learn a lot about him as a character. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can tell that he's got a lot of, um, he carries himself with a lot of honor and a lot of um, s sort of uh, self-respect certainly, but there's also like sort of a mysterious air about him. So like he lives in a very lavish house, but we don't see him work, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, he clearly is affected by his family. You know, there's the part where his son ignores him because he felt like it man ignored him previously. And you can tell that affects him. His wife is just like, all you care about is Kung Fu. Basically you need to be a fucking father. You deadbeat. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so I think you learn a lot. And it's, it's a great introduction to them. And then, but you're right. It takes a hard right turn and then it's like, mm -hmm. Oh, and then the Japanese invaded. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Shit got serious. Well, I guess, uh, I guess before we get into that, I, the, the first like big, you know, fight that you get is with, uh, what what's the character's name that is 
is like the the main i guess bully or whatever he he shows up and he he battles like all the the masters the kung fu masters um you know who uh, i'm talking uh, about jin yeah okay so so yeah he he basically like tears through all these masters you know just uh and then finally gets to 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 master ip and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see where this, where this goes. And it was a lot of fun to watch the, the Kung Fu just looking like soft butter, basically. How it's just so smooth and effortless and granted, like, you know, he's, you know, a Kung Fu master, so it is effortless to him, but even even matched up with a worthy opponent for him, the kung fu still feels. I, I just I, I dig the the martial arts style of kung fu, uh, compared to to other martial arts and mixed martial arts styles because it's just very smooth. So it was it was cool to to see that, you know that scene uh, between the two. Uh, granted, he you know he still wiped the floor with him, but you know the, there was definitely some sparring involved, and like you said, there was there was some humor to her where he kept on breaking his shit, and he's like, "I'll pay," <laughs> and you know back at it again. I'm I'm glad you brought up the fight choreography, which is I mean, let's be honest, that's the main reason I think a lot of people are into martial arts films is the fight right. scene. Right. Um, these were done by Sammo Hong, legendary fight choreographer and actor. Um, anyone who's familiar with this genre is familiar with his work, whether they realize it or not. He's choreographed so many movies and, and starred and, and been involved in so many different um, martial arts films. So he is a living legend, basically. Right. I don't know. I, I, I really enjoyed, like, I mean, every every scene that involves you know, sparring. I, I, I enjoyed to, to some extent. I was scared for him when he was like, give me 10 guys. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's, that's when the movie really, to me, ramped up, ramped up. Yeah. 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 I was like, okay, well, um, it was nice knowing you, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) Go ahead. Uh, yeah, and, and then just proceeds to, like, no problem whatsoever, just kick everyone's ass, and then, like, not even care about the fucking rice that, you know, they, what, ten bags of rice they were gonna give him? Like, yeah. th- that was the deal, like, a bag of rice per person, or per, per ass? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and the only one he cared about was the bloody bag of rice that his his friends um an old i guess mentee uh uh died on um uh, the one that uh, that we were character that we were talking about yeah 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 and he takes it of course to master lou's widow um right afterwards so yeah that is definitely to me the point where the film really ramps up and and takes another pretty significant turn Mm -hmm. you know prior to that most of the fights have been less serious Mm -hmm. yeah for sure you know there's the friendly spar at the beginning we talked about with him and master lou there's the fight that he has with Jin, which is a little more serious but still not like life and death necessarily yeah i mean it's well within the first act of the movie so you know not uh, something bad isn't really going to go down there's not really stakes yet right yeah yeah um this one it 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 marks a hard turn with it man as a character so he Mm -hmm. goes from i don't want to say necessarily lackadaisical but very very loose let's say Mm -hmm. and then once he realizes what's happened to his friends and of course he sees master lou get shot he's just like shit's getting real yeah Uh, and so this fight he unleashes a level of brutality that we haven't seen yet from him so it's 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 unexpected for two reasons one because we haven't seen it and two because he has been he hasn't practiced martial arts since the occupation began so um to just come out covered in rust and then completely fucking own ten, right 10 dudes was pretty uh pretty remarkable plus it's a badass scene uh it's yeah. got some of my favorite fight choreography and again it's just so it's so much more brutal compared to the fights we've seen 
prior to that. You know, the right. first guy just gets fucking owned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I think the second guy, he straight up just like breaks his leg. So he's got him. He takes him down into the splits. And oh, Jesus. He, yeah. He, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. He, he fucking breaks like all those dudes. <laughs> yeah. Just completely. Um, when he just, he, he starts punching the guy, the, the, which is the, in the typical, um, Wing Chun sense of like face, chest, face, chest, face, just over and over and like ends up right. bowing the guy backwards until he's on his back on the mat. And I was just like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just some, like uh, rep- brutal moments. Right. Yeah. Just repetitive punches to the face and chest. Just like, I was like, oh, yeah, do it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was pretty intense. That is the correct way to feel about every Kung Fu movie ever. Oh, yeah. Do it. Right. He just fucking sends all of these dudes to the fucking hospital. It was so great. Yeah. I remember like texting you. I was like, this is the best movie ever. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, what you were saying about kind of the, the turn for master Ip at this moment, you can definitely see it at the end of the battle when, when he beats all 10 dudes, because like, you know, there's that close up of his fist or fists, like literally shaking and, you know, they're not, his fists aren't like all beat up, but you can definitely tell that he's been in a fight you know they're they're red yeah 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 and and like you said this is the first time in the movie that we see him like this where he's actually like he exerted a lot of energy instead of like being reactive to 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 to, uh his opponents because he can get away with that now like he he's a fucking man on a mission and the the mission is to kick the shit out of you know these people that are you know killing his friends and family and and so that was it was really interesting to see and and very well done in my opinion that just that close up of of his fist and you, like it just really sends the point home that you know there's there's a, a change yeah uh, there's a change coming uh and yeah it's just it's very very neat very well done for sure, for sure. Um, one last note about the fights um, and fight choreography is um, Ip Man's oldest son, Ip Chun, was actually brought in as a technical advisor uh, oh, yeah. along with some of his students um, and some other uh, pretty well-respected martial artists to serve as technical... Excuse me, they were all brought in to serve as technical consultants. So that gave it sort of a little more, I guess, legitimacy, you might say. Um, sure. You know, obviously, if Chun studied under his father, so he kind of knew his father's style better than, um, you know, probably the average stunt coordinator or fight fight choreographer. Right, right. Yeah. Do Do you have a favorite fight from this movie? Um, the 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 ten versus one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say. Hmm, I don't know. I feel like I'd have to watch it again to really give a concrete answer, but that is, that scene is definitely a top contender. I won't try and reiterate anything that I just uh, said because I kind of went on about it for a few minutes, but yeah, that, that scene in particular is a, definitely a top contender. I, I really liked uh, and enjoyed the final, final battle scene with him and what was the, uh, the general. General. Yeah. Yeah. That, that one was, was pretty good too um i'm trying to think of any other fight scenes in between that one the 10 on one and the others uh i know that you know there's a a little bit of you know fighting and sparring uh you know especially you know when he he decides to or he agrees to start training the the workers of that uh, what we decided was a, a cotton mill yeah. Uh, yeah yeah and and so he trains them because they kept on getting you know ransacked by that that bully by, by that, Jin and his group of bandits yeah uh, the, uh i mean i know that they were supposed to be like the bad guys or antagonists of this movie not not the main ones but you know they're they're definitely there but all that said i did like the scene where they're just like driving along and then like 
he's just sitting on a log that is blocking the road. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what's going on? And then like all of his bros like come out of the, literally out of the woodwork. <laughs> and right. They're like, fuck. <laughs> that was pretty great. Like, I mean, like I said, I, I know that he's supposed to be the antagonist or whatever, but that was still pretty entertaining to, yeah, to but watch. He's, he's more of like a school bully. Right. Yeah. You know, who's, Maybe not even a school bully, just like a, a, a misguided kid. Where he's like, he's actually not a bad guy, you know. I think right. He ends up kind of turning, and uh, maybe that's one of the later films. I could be wrong, but yeah, I, I felt like they they could have gone that way. I, I have I've yet to watch any of the the the, the sequels or uh, the, the preceding films, but I had I kind of got a, a feeling or a hunch that. Maybe they did it like that. Uh, they they set up his character to where he could have that kind of um, you know turning point in in a later film. So, uh, but yeah, I I did enjoy his fighting as well. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, his, his, he had a very interesting styles clash compared mm-hmm. to Wing Chun, where his was very like power based. Yeah, based, you, know, you can kind of tell that based on his stance and the movements, whereas. You know, it man's Wing Chun is very much more defensive based. Like you said, it's more about reacting to what your opponent is doing rather than being the aggressor. Yeah, it's it's almost and I'm not going to pretend to know anything about martial arts or MMA or boxing or Kung Fu. But it, 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 I know that, you know, there's boxers out there where their style is much more you know, defensive where they let their opponent just wail on them for an extended period of time. So they tire themselves out and then they get on the offensive and and Mm. attack. And and it, I'm, I'm not trying to say that, that that's what he was doing, but it seemed like it was something sort of akin to that. Uh, Or at least, you know, like, Hey, I know more than you. So I don't really have to, try and and you know land any blows because i know all of the moves before you actually think of them <laughs> so well and that kind of goes back to what i was saying about him as a character where he's you know he's very clearly superior to basically everyone he faces especially right. in that first you know first third of the movie where it's you know the stakes are nearly as high he's got the friendly sparring with master lu and then he has the the less friendly challenge from Jin, but even with those you know he's they're fighting and he's like toying with them almost or maybe not in that's got the wrong connotation like not a disrespectful or demeaning way but right you know yeah. he he shows a, a good example of this is in the fight with Jin, where he's got the stick and he pokes it up under Jin's like arm which would have been basically yeah. a, a death blow with a sword or a spear. Mm-hmm. And he just is like, he just stops. He doesn't do it. Or he does it with um, one of the other students who comes and is like, Oh, let me show you, you know, something I learned. Uh, and he shows him and he's like, Oh, here's the opening. And he, and he puts his fist to the side of his face. He doesn't hit him. He just kind of places it there. And he's like, there's the weak point. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just, it all demonstrates that he's such a vastly superior martial artist to everyone else yeah yeah for sure um i'm trying to think of any any other major moments in this movie i I feel like there were there were several um i I know that we've we've talked a lot about uh, this stuff that happened in in like act one and act two but you know like stuff leading up to and and involving act three and the final battle I don't know. I mean, you've definitely seen this a few more times than I have. Is there anything noteworthy that, that we're kind of missing out on that, that we haven't touched on yet? Um, I mean, you know, we talked a little bit about him training the people at the cotton mill. Um, he, it basically after he after he does a ten on one, the general becomes obsessed with him with it man. Mm-hmm. 
Right. He tries to get him to come back and he won't. And then he finally agrees to, to, to instruct the Japanese soldiers. Or I'm sorry. The general tries to get him to instruct the Japanese soldiers and it refuses and is like, fuck that fight me basically. <laughs> yeah, um, that's right. And of course the general accepts and then gets fucking wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> In in um, they have that huge exhibition match in the middle of like the public square, basically town square, right? Um, and of course, you know, Ip wins because he's he's the man. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I don't I don't think the general put a whole lot of like stock into it or, or tried to prepare as best as possible because, well, I mean. I'm sure he's pretty full of himself, but also he had, you know, his, his dude standing pretty close by ready to, you know, bust a cap if, if, and when, you know, some shit went down, you know, Mm. if, uh, what, what was the, uh, the, the thing that they agreed upon that if he didn't throw the fight that he was going to, he was going to go, get to shoot him or kill him or, or whatever. Yeah. He, he basically says, you know, Hey, uh, if you throw the fight, then you'll live. Um, right. And it man's just like, nah, <laughs> 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 your boy's going to get wrecked. And, uh, and that's what happens. I believe that uh, Colonel uh, Sato, I believe is his name. Um, he does end up shooting it, man. Uh, spoiler alert and then spoiler alert. It man lives because we've talked about there are like four of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is kind of the end of it, and it shows the the um, the crowd sort of storming it and, and, and fighting with Japanese soldiers. Um, it man does live, like I said, and escapes to Hong Kong, where he does open up his own martial arts school. Mm-hmm. Um, the third act is kind of like I don't want to say extraneous, but it, it's like it's it, the movie really kind of starts to lose it, lose its way there, in my opinion. Um, you know, the, this isn't high art, so right. I don't expect a whole lot out of it. I do expect a coherent story and the third act just kind of, I think it juggles too many things and winds up just being like, sure. now we got to have the big last fight and then let's take it home. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's still enjoyable, you know, yeah. don't get me wrong. I, I love this movie. Um, yeah, I think like, the run, not, t- it's not high art. Yeah. I think the run time is pretty, pretty perfect. Like it's, it's not too long. It's, uh, it doesn't, for the most part, it doesn't have a whole lot of pacing issues. So, you know, there, there really wasn't any point in time in, in watching this where I was like, oh my God, I like get to the fighting already or whatever. Like, like you said, the, the story, it, it does take a backseat to the, the actual fighting, but it is a cohesive story at, at the very least. You know, it's, it's a decent one. It's one that I, I bought into. I wasn't, it, it didn't really have any eye rolling moments. So, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, it definitely, it, it could have been way, way, way worse. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I agree for the most part with the runtime. It's an hour and 45 minutes or so, which is pretty yeah. good. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's not too, too long. You know, um, action movies sometimes have the tendency to want to throw everything at you so that it's like two hours and 15 minutes. And by the end of it, you're just like, Jesus Christ, just stop. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think there's some good, there's some good stuff in the third act and there's some stuff that I'm like, okay, this was unnecessary or didn't work in my opinion, but mm-hmm. you know, that, that said, like I said, I still, I still like the shit out of this movie. I'll, I'll, I'll watch it 400 times probably. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely excited to, to get to watching the, the others. And I'm for sure interested in, in it man four uh, cause I, re- I remember I, it might've been maybe John wick three. We went to go see and we saw a trailer for this movie uh, or for it man four. And I can't remember what, what I mean. Either way, um, I, I remember us watching the trailer, and I was like, "Holy shit! Like, is this what I've been missing out on?" And you were like, yes. "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what you've been missing out on." Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's kind of a good stopping point for it, man, and sort of getting back into just martial arts films as a whole. So, like, right, man, you have just opened up a whole world of movies that 
previously did not exist to you. So good luck right. with Godspeed, man. There's a bunch of them. Nah. Netflix has a bunch of good ones. Oh, Christine yeah. The classic uh, Shaw Brothers stuff that's on there. There's some of the newer stuff. I know Hero was on there for a long time, which Hero is one of my favorite movies just ever in general. Okay. Um, it's it's fantastic. Shadows on there, of course. You know we saw that uh, at the Bell Court when it was in theaters. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's a lot of good stuff. Like I said, it, it really runs the gamut from really cheesy, really cornball stuff all the way up to just like very serious, very artistic stuff like Hero or Shadow, mm-hmm. um, as well as you know some others. Those are just two that come to mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely gonna have you make me a list. Because I am for sure wanting to check out more martial arts and kung fu movies going forward. Uh, and like I said, I'll, I'm definitely going to check out the rest of what the Ip Man series has to offer. Because Donnie Yen is the shit. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think I really have anything else to, to touch on. Uh, as far as this movie or or anything else goes um do do you have any any last final thoughts um everybody should watch more kung fu movies <laughs> yeah that's yes that it that's a a great uh great suggestion uh do you want to do shit that doesn't suck yes all right, so for my shit that doesn't suck, I just watched the second season of Afterlife on Netflix. It's the Ricky Gervais uh, show with, um, I mean, it's it's not your your typical, like, you know, when you think of Rick, Ricky Gervais, obviously, you know, he's a stand-up comedian and he was, of course, in the, the UK original version of The Office and he's just been in a lot of, like, comedy movies and shows and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But this is <clears throat> very different from a lot of the stuff that he's kind of well known for. It's very, very serious. And I mean, it does have a little bit of comedy and, and levity to it, but I mean, it's, it's a, a show where his wife dies. Uh, it's not really a spoiler, um, but you know, and, and he, he basically season one starts out where he like he's thinking about killing himself, but he's like, well, then who's going to feed the fucking dog? So he decides to not kill himself. Um, but yeah, season two just uh, was recently released. Uh, I want to say last week or the week before. And I decided to watch it because I really enjoyed season one. Um, it's easy to get through. The episodes are pretty short and the seasons aren't very long. So yeah, uh, it's, it's a good show. If you're, I, I would say be in the right mindset for something a little bit more serious. Uh, if you're going through some shit right now, then I probably wouldn't watch this, but if you're willing to be a little bit adventurous, then I'd say, you know, give it a shot. Okay. Right on. Yeah. Uh, my show that doesn't suck is I recently got around to watching Upgrade uh, from director oh, Lee yeah. Mel. He most recently did the new Invisible Man film that got a lot of really good reviews, which I uh, unfortunately did not get a chance to see in theaters. And then, of course, the corona hit, so I haven't seen it yet, but it's definitely on the list. This was, I think, his first director, uh, his first feature as a director. And uh, it is a very solid movie. It's not great. <laughs> I wouldn't say uh-huh. it's kind of a, it's kind of like a B movie with a budget. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of it is elevated by the fact that there's some really, really interesting stylistic choices with the way they shoot some of the fight scenes and some of the action sequences where the camera's doing all these crazy things and moving in ways that are not super familiar to, um, or uh, excuse me, uh, not super prevalent in a lot of other films. So Definitely, definitely a really good sci-fi action movie. Um, a solid three out of five, in my opinion. But it's right a very solid three, so I, I recommended it. I had a lot of fun with it. Dope. Yeah, when you were you texted me the other day and you asked me if I had seen it, and I was like, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that movie. So yeah, I I definitely want to check it out now. So. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess that's that's going to do it for this episode of Geek Garage Goes to the Movies. Um, like always, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. We're on YouTube 
Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, pretty much anywhere that you can find a podcast, we're, we're on there. So look us up, subscribe if you haven't already, leave us a rating and review where applicable. And yeah, do do the movies thing. Watch more movies because movies will make life better. I think that's it. That's right. Right, yeah. right Ted? That's close yeah. enough. Yes, we we I think more times than not we've said just do the movies thing in, in, instead of like the actual actual uh, uh, sign off line for the the ghost of the movies episode. Uh, but yeah, all right. Well, like I said, that's gonna do it for this episode, and we will catch you on the Filipini flop. Bye.